The love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Spirit of God dwelling within us. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this Mass. Uh, I hope you're feeling well this morning, uh, no symptoms, and you're putting up with one another well and tolerably, uh, and enjoying the break, the rest. You know, these things uh, will soon be all be behind us, we hope. And you'll think, uh, what on earth did I do with all that time? Um, hopefully it's been very fruitful for you so far and will continue to be. In the meantime, we are together in the Spirit, in the Holy Spirit that joins us. We come together to worship the Lord, our Lord and God, our loving Father. Let us call to mind those things that we have separated ourselves from God with, sin. All that is unworthy amongst us and within us. And let us ask for his mercy, because he is a loving and merciful God. And I'm saying this Mass this morning for the repose of the soul of Mario Grima. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. So calling to mind our sins, let us prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy on us. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are now seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. On this memorial of St. Philip Neri. O God, who never ceased to bestow the glory of holiness on the faithful servants you raise up for yourself. Graciously grant that the Holy Spirit may kindle in us that fire with which he wonderfully filled the heart of St. Philip Neri. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. From Miletus, Paul sent for the elders of the church of Ephesus. When they arrived, he addressed these words to them. You know what my way of life has been ever since the first day I set foot among you in Asia. How I have served the Lord in all humility with all the sorrows and trials that came to me through the plots of the Jews. I have not hesitated to do anything that would be helpful to you. I have preached to you and instructed you both in public and in your homes, urging both Jews and Greeks to turn to God and to believe in our Lord Jesus. And now you see me, a prisoner already in spirit, I am on my way to Jerusalem, but have no idea what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit, in town after town, has made it clear enough that imprisonment and persecution await me. But life to me is not a thing to waste words on, provided that when I finished my race, I have carried out the mission the Lord Jesus gave me. And that was to bear witness to the good news of God's grace. I now feel that none among you whom I have gone abroad proclaiming the kingdom will ever see my face again. And so here and now I swear that my conscience is clear as far as all of you are concerned. For I have, without faltering, put before you the whole of God's purpose. The word of the Lord. 
kingdoms of the earth sing to God. You poured down, O God, a generous rain when your people were starved and you gave them new life. It was there that your people found a home, prepared in your goodness, O God, for the poor. Kingdoms of the earth sing to God. May the Lord be blessed day after day. He bears our burdens, God our Saviour. This God of ours is a God who saves. The Lord our God holds the keys of death. Kingdoms of the earth sing to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I shall ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that your Son may glorify you. And through the power over all mankind that you have given him, let him give eternal life to all those you have entrusted to him. And eternal life is this, to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on earth, and finish the work that you gave me to do. Now, Father, it is time for you to glorify me with the glory I had with you before ever the world was. I have made your name known to men you took from the world to give me. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now at last they know that all you have given me comes indeed from you. For I have given them the teaching you gave to me. And they have truly accepted this, that I came from you and have believed that it was you who sent me. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, because they belong to you. All I have is yours. And all you have is mine, and in them I am glorified. I am not in the world any longer, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. The Gospel of the Lord. I read somewhere, some time ago, that scientists discovered that a tiny round worm can live six times longer than normal if certain genes and hormones are tweaked. In fact, it lived in human terms equivalent to 500 years longer than expected. And when this became known, the press unsurprisingly acclaimed, worms hold eternal life secret. Of course, the headline was misleading. The worm story points to longevity, not eternal life. Jesus, however, points to eternal life. And as I mentioned last Sunday, and again we hear that gospel this morning, Jesus defined it for us. And this is eternal life, he said, to know you, the only true God and his son, Jesus Christ. Human life begins in time and never ends because it is everlasting communion of the life of the Blessed Trinity. We don't hear too much talk these days of eternal realities. You remember, however, death, judgment, 
heaven and hell, the second coming of Christ, the resurrection of the dead, they are all truths of our faith which are to do with eternal life. St. Philip Neri knew these things very well. Born in Florence on the 22nd of July, 1515, although into a noble family, his father lived frugally as a notary. He had two sisters, Caterina and, Liz and Elisabetta, and also a brother who died in very early childhood. His brother's death affected him very deeply. Educated by the Dominicans, he would have observed the great preacher, Savonarola. From an early age, his life bore witness to God's care. On one occasion, apparently he jumped on the back of a donkey who immediately bucked and threw him down into a deep cellar. His family rushed to save him, thinking he may have died by the fall, but found him uninjured and quite well. Philip was unconventional and without any pretension. He felt God calling him to Rome, so he moved there and became a tutor to a rich family. Later, after studying under the Augustinians, he worked among the sick poor of the city. And his fame spread, they called him the Apostle of Rome. He founded an oratory to pray and recite the Psalms in praise of God daily. A community gathered, and they're now known today as the Oratorians. He would often beg for the gift of the Holy Spirit, and once was so taken up by the sense of God's presence that he felt literally that his heart was on fire and that his body would burst open with the love of God. He also had a strong sense of humility and would do ridiculous things to remind himself to be humble. One story was that he once preached on his head to get people's attention. Although feeling a certain affinity to Philip, I was ordained priest on this his feast day. You may be thankful that I feel no urge to stand on my head at this moment. Let us now pray to God the Father. Put to him all our needs and cares for the world, for the church, for ourselves. Let us pray firstly for the church, for the vicar of Christ on earth, our Holy Father, Pope, Benedict, Pope Francis. We also pray for Pope Emeritus Benedict, we pray for all the bishops and leaders of the church, for our own Bishop Richard. Let us pray for this parish, that we become enlivened by that Holy Spirit promised to us. That Holy Spirit with us now and whose coming again we will celebrate this coming weekend. That Spirit so firm and fiery in the heart of Philip we ask that that same spirit will make our hearts fiery, on fire with the love of Christ for him and for his people. Lord, in your mercy. And at this time of confinement, we ask that our own homes become centers of prayer, that that prayer reaches out through all our family and through those outside our homes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all those who were preparing to receive the various sacraments and have had that program interrupted by the closure of our churches. We pray that they will remain patient, trusting in the Lord, 
keeping their minds alive and active in faith. And we pray that that time will not be too far away when we can come together again in safety and in joy and love for Christ and of each other. Lord, in your mercy, let us pray for all those who suffer in our world at this time, those whose lives have been turned upside down by this virus, their futures in question, their finances unsure. Let us pray for all those who have been affected bodily by this disease and for other terminal diseases. Let us pray for those people that they will remain strong of heart and close to our Lord, no matter what. And we pray for all those who are affected by a family member in that way. We pray for all those who have been bereaved by this virus, that they find comfort, comfort in the presence of the Lord, which they may feel close to them now. Lord, in your mercy, let us commend to God the souls of all the faithful departed this life, those who are dying at this moment, those whose anniversary of death occurs at this time, and we look forward to the time when we will be reunited with our own loved ones who've gone before us. We believe in eternal life, the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. We're already in that eternal life, as Jesus tells us. If we know him, know the Father as the one true God. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. And let us ask our Blessed Lady to pray for us and with us. As we say together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. Loving and merciful Father, we offer you our prayers. We ask you to accept them today. In the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
As we offer you the sacrifice of praise, O Lord, we ask that by the example of St. Philip, we may always give ourselves cheerfully for the glory of your name and the service of our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together in the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, He took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, And with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love.
Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that in imitation of St. Philip, we may always long for that food by which we truly live. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, it's lovely to be with you all again this morning. Another bright sunny day. Uh, it seems unfair that many people are cooped up indoors and can't get out into the fresh air. Still, the, uh, you can go out and exercise more every day now. Um, I'm not sure what that means for me. I haven't repeated my 5K run, but I do walk every evening, and I'm sure you all get your um, exercise at the due time. The main thing is that we avoid uh, bumping into people, literally. I hope you enjoy the rest of the day, and uh, we shall be here again uh, this evening for evening prayer, um, and as usual throughout the week, 10 o'clock, for Mass, 6 o'clock for evening prayer. I look forward to seeing you there. Do visit our website. There's plenty of other spiritual resources on there, uh, reading material and things like that. There's also a children's section, so get the kids to uh, uh, join in with the things that are going on there. There's lots of lively activities. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.